Hello, my name is Elke Platz and I'm a physician at Brigham and Women's Hospital. In this video, we are going to discuss the use of lung ultrasound for patients with known or suspected pulmonary COVID-19. Here's the lecture overview. In this presentation, we're going to talk about ultrasound equipment and cleaning, the currently available literature, and lung ultrasound findings, including B-lines and consolidations. What type of ultrasound equipment can be used for lung ultrasound? Really any ultrasound equipment that is currently available in the clinical setting. Either cart-based machines that are frequently used in the emergency department or pocket ultrasound devices. It is important to keep in mind that the equipment will need to be cleaned thoroughly and therefore all parts that are not immediately needed for the exam should be removed before entering the room. Which type of transducer can be used for lung ultrasound in suspected viral pneumonia? Well, all three types of transducers shown on the slide can be useful. However, this presentation is going to mainly focus on curvilinear and phased array transducers because of the most common lung ultrasound findings in viral pneumonia that can be detected with these transducers. Since disease transmission is of high concern in patients with COVID-19, machine cleaning is essential. There are several different disinfectant wipes that can be used and shown here are two types of wipes that are appropriate as an example. After cleaning the machine, it is important to wait for the appropriate time based on the type of wipes used. So you would clean the machine first, then wait for example three minutes, then scan the patient, clean the machine again, and wait again before using it on the next patient. We recommend cleaning the entire machine, not just the transducers. Given the recent emergence of this disease, the level of evidence for ultrasound imaging is sparse and supplemented by reports from clinicians in Italy. In order to understand what to expect on lung ultrasound, I would like to briefly review the available data on CT findings in patients with pulmonary COVID-19 infection. As summarized in this table, the majority of patients had ground glass opacities on CT 44% had consolidations, and only 14% had proliffusions. In most patients, findings were bilateral and multifocal or diffuse. Moving on to the available ultrasound data in patients with pulmonary COVID-19 infections, here's an overview of findings that have been described in the current literature and reported by clinicians working in Europe. These are thickened or irregular pleural line, B lines, which at times can be confluent, subpleural consolidations, consolidations with air bronchograms, and localized pleural effusions adjacent to consolidations. In this lecture, we will focus on the findings highlighted here since these are both the most common but also easy to detect findings. I would like to mention that lung ultrasound findings may be visible before findings on chest x-ray are seen. There are several different imaging protocols that have been published for lung ultrasound. We are describing a protocol that many clinicians are already familiar with for the assessment of patients with heart failure. This eight zone protocol involves the anterior and lateral areas of the chest as shown here on the image on the right hand side in the upper corner. If all of these areas or zones of the chest are reassuring, then assessment of two additional posterior zones would be indicated if the patient is stable enough to either sit up or be rolled onto their side. Although posterior chest zones are commonly affected in patients with COVID-19, it may be more difficult to examine these areas in critically ill patients. So let's start by looking at B-lines. For the uh, ultrasound exam, the transducer is placed in per perpendicular orientation to the ribs in an intercostal space so that, that the ribs can be identified as landmarks. 
If you place the transducer on a healthy patient, you would see the image on the left hand side. There are ribs up on top, the pleural line just underneath the ribs, and then deep to that, lung. What you don't see here are any artifacts that arise from the pleural line in the image on the left. By contrast, if you place the transducer on the chest of a patient with viral pneumonia, you may see these vertical lines that arise from the pleural line. These so-called B lines are reverberation artifacts. If three or more B lines are identified in one intercostal space at the same time, we would consider this chest zone as positive. The extent of lung involvement relates to the number of positive zones. Since patients are typically breathing, you can see that these B lines here on the right side move back and forth with respiration. As I mentioned earlier, lung ultrasound examinations can also be performed with pocket ultrasound devices. Here are two examples. Patient one without any B lines. However, patient B or patient two shows multiple B lines. A common question is whether B lines can only occur in viral pneumonia. In other words, are they specific for this condition? The answer to this question is no. There are several other conditions in which B lines can be identified. These include pulmonary edema and heart failure, for instance, ARDS, pulmonary conditions, as seen on this clip here on the left, pulmonary fibrosis, and post radiation changes. To put this information in context of other conditions, here is a schematic comparison of pulmonary edema in the setting of heart failure, viral and bacterial pneumonia. As you can see, there is an overlap between these conditions in terms of lung ultrasound findings. It is therefore essential to keep the clinical context in mind when interpreting lung ultrasound findings. Ultrasound results are only one piece of the puzzle in the assessment of patients. Let's move on to additional lung ultrasound findings, consolidations. The first type of consolidation I would like to discuss is called subpleural consolidation. For comparison, I'm showing a normal lung image with smooth pleural line on the left side of the screen. By contrast, on the image on the right, there is a hypoechoic or black area that looks like someone took a bite out of the pleural line. This is an example of a subpleural consolidation. You may also see adjacent B lines. Here is an example of the second type of consolidation. This is a clip of the right lateral chest, one intercostal space below zone four. To get you oriented on this image, here is the direction of the patient's head, patient's feet, patient's right side, patient's middle. Here is the diaphragm. You can see the consolidation, which has a solid organ appearance just above the diaphragm. Within the consolidation, hyperechoic or bright white lines can be visualized. These are air bronchograms. Since consolidations can have solid organ appearance, it is important to differentiate between organs just below the diaphragm, in this case the liver, and intrathoracic structures that are visualized on ultrasound. And here, a side-by-side -side comparison of a subpleural consolidation, again, which looks like someone took a bite out of the pleural line on the left side of the screen, and a consolidation with air bronchograms on the right. The presence and size of a consolidation may rely, relate to the severity of illness and COVID-19. 
I hope that this lecture provided you with an overview of the lung ultrasound findings in patients with COVID-19. In summary, machine cleaning is essential. Use the appropriate disinfectant wipes before and after scanning the patient and wait the appropriate time based on the wipes you are using. V-lines appear to be a common finding in patients with pulmonary COVID-19. Typically, three or more V-lines are considered significant if seen in one intercostal space or zone. Understand that lung ultrasound findings may be visible before findings on chest X-ray and that the extent of lung involvement relates to the number of positive zones. And finally, the presence and size of a consolidation may relate to the severity of illness. I would also like to point out that our knowledge about this disease and its imaging findings is evolving, and the here presented imaging protocols may need to be adapted accordingly over time. Here are a few references that I also cited during the lecture. Thank you for your attention.